uh, the official Dollhouse trailer, and uh, a, a very special performance by the Baxter Park Band here at DIZ tonight at the Auto Control Show. And these ladies have, have consented to come down and be a part of this lunacy. They're actually going to come out on stage and thank God there's security up on stage because it's going to get great. Are you ready to
was that shirt, darling? Yo! Ho! The little bubble. If any of you guys are taking pictures, make sure you send a set to Pee Wee Herman. You know, give him something to do. You know what we're saying? originally you and your mom how much peanut butter how much jelly did it take to cover you two this morning five um, of peanut butter and five of jelly five jars of peanut butter five jars of jelly they smeared it all over their bodies and they've been uh, tracking it yeah. all over the bar this morning let's hear it for them our grand prize <laughs> and Scott Rappaport down to Florida to get to the bottom of this sartorial controversy. This is 21-year-old Kimberly Wilson, an aspiring actress, a woman with a dress. To me, I feel that it's cutesy. This is the dress. Cutesy, isn't it? It's cutesy. It's very summery. So what's the problem? And why am I talking like this? Okay, here's the deal. Seems that when cute Kim donned the adorable dress and went shopping at the Florida Mall in Orlando, she gave shoppers a severe case of eye strain, which reportedly led to mall security asking Kim, who obviously wears it well, to wear it somewhere else. Calling the local papers. Soon, she was the top story in Orlando. We got some calls here, and people called up and said, I hear the way she, the way it happened is she wasn't wearing any underwear, and you could see her butt. No, was not that? at all, not at all. For Kimberly Wilson, it's been a publicity bonanza. I was just saying, if you got a nice butt, show it. <laughs> well, I'm happy with my butt, but I wasn't showing it. But not every caller was so appreciative. My husband said he saw her bare behind. Oh, come on now. No. You were embarrassed. Listen, you little trip, we don't need this sort of thing, you know? But Kimberly stuff for that. Also coming up next is, is a movie called The Brain, and it explores madness. I, I think that's one probably... One of my favorite movies is yeah. where Peter Lurie's brain escapes and starts crawling around on the piano, isn't that it? And they hit it with a trivial yeah. pursuit game. It's, it's really neat. That's not it. Okay, no, well, it's, but it's real good. good though. It's real good. Spies out there, and a very good friend of mine called me to tell me that you said that you came on the show and got in touch with me because you read my phone number on the men's bathroom wall. <laughs> but we won't say which bathroom. It was a nice bathroom. I just wanted to know if it was really one of the nice better place. bathrooms. Okay. It it's a country club. It was someone totally obnoxious and, and call them up and then spring it on them that it's only a joke and they're supposed to be happy with that. <laughs> okay, it's here's somebody. Yeah. I'd like you to meet somebody. I guess you've never met her. Look at this innocent face. This is Sherry Miller. She's our art director. Yes, a victim. Vi yes. A victim. And I believe you called Sherry at how, what time in the morning? Well, it was seven. Seven in the morning. Respectable hour. A now, respectable what, what hour. We, what was the bit again? You told her that you were motorcycle gang members and wanted to stay at her house. Am I right? That's oh, correct. you had the right. friend who would invite would use Crazy the credit card and run up a lot of bills. Yeah. That's, okay, that's remember the friend. that. It was the uh, <laughs> biker types were on the phone uh, informing me that they were going to be coming down in a few weeks to stay at my house. <laughs> Trying out. Now, the funny go. thing is, is, she said, okay, but let me get the spare bedroom in order first. <laughs> uh, hi, we're Baxter and Mark from KZY. I'm talking to my guitar because uh, we're down here at Channel 12 and um, we're just kind of sitting out here by the campfire, waiting to get blown apart by lightning. And uh, we thought before we go, we'd like to uh, do something. We, we rarely do this. It's kind of a special little acoustic thing, uh, two-part harmony. So go something like this, and we hope you enjoy it and phone in a pledge to Channel 12 tonight. Thank you.
there's a disaster brewing in Canada. The nation's brewery workers are on strike, and the country is running out of beer. So a couple of Orlando DJs have decided it's time to come to the rescue, and they've written a song to get their point across. It's called Canada's Out of Beer. Wayne Bennett has a report. It was WDIZ's dizzy duo Baxter and Mark that wrote and produced the song, about half humanitarian and half in self-defense. So listen, this is no big joke. It's more serious than you think. We better send those hosers up some sun before their beer guts start to shrink. Let's avoid a possible invasion. You know, the rumors, I think they're true. They'll be coming down here to seal our beer, because Canada's out of room. And the radio station's listeners are apparently willing to help. But there are times when the motives of both the listeners and the DJs come into question. I send them all the Budweiser. <laughs> well, you uh, tell you what you do is you wrap it up and you send it to Baxter and Mark here of WDIZ, and we'll make sure that it that it's uh, disposed of properly. And could you put maybe some beer nuts and pretzels in there too? It's up to us, America. We got more beer than we need. Let's share our wealth with Canada. We'll be coming down here to feed. to MTV men who drive you crazy with a look at WDIZ's Baxter and Mark. DIZ, the morning show with Baxter and Mark Jackson. That's Alan Baxter. And this is Mark Zemanski. Together they're known as Baxter and Mark. The first time I tried to interview them, I was told to show up at a warehouse in Altamont Springs. They were rehearsing for an upcoming appearance of the DIZ band. The guys get a lot of calls during their show, sometimes visitors, female visitors. They show up in uh, really strange outfits at the weirdest hours, 6 o'clock in the morning, with uh, you know an idea in their head. Or oh, they want concert tickets. Yeah, and they're willing to do darn near anything for it. Of course, we immediately throw them out. Luckily, Mark's wife of five years, Karen, understands. No thoughts of divorce or leaving him because no. of uh, the amount of women that are knocking on his door. And... No, no, you just can't let it be a threat. Continues here on the morning the guys are now going international. The beer song they wrote during the Canadian beer strike was just bought by Labatch Beer. That could mean big bucks. You're on the radio, you're out in clubs, you've got a band. Uh... Yeah, Where does it end? What else do you do? We do just about everything. Uh, we... Uh... What do we do? Well, we've been at the mall and we've played music and sold pencils and yeah, anything. that we don't have legs and it goes over real well. Uh, we, uh, we have real short uh, hours in our real job, if you want to call it a real job. A lot of people would argue with that, I suppose. But uh, we have a lot of free time on our hands. We use it to go out and do other things that we think are, are fun. And uh, that's one of them. 638-5662. Oh, there's a phone call here. Hello. We have a phone call. Hang Hel just Hello. Uh, it's, it's, yes, it's for you. It's the president. Oh, thank you. Yes, President Bush. It's, it's President Bush. Uh, Quail is in. Quail is out. He's in. he's out. He's in. Okay, well, he here. Tell yes, us, Mr. President. No, no, Mr. President. We're not going to hurl on TV. No, I don't care how much you pledge to we're education. Not gonna, we're not going to pull a bush on no, television. No, no, no way. Sorry, sorry, so sorry, sir. Goodbye. Uh, uh, but the phone lines are now That's open right. again, call, please. Call, call that number, 1-800. Now, uh, we all have had bad haircuts before, but nothing like Eric Graham. And as George Chicarone reports, Eric took one look in the mirror and screamed, I've been fleeced. There's a reason Eric Graham here won't let me peek under his hat. We're talking about Eric, the guy that's suing J.C. Penney for $10,000. Says he got a bad haircut. What do you think? Man, just throw this moron out. Real long on the sides. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Eric here says that when he went to this Orlando shopping mall for a styling at the J.C. Penney hair salon, he got clipped. A song we wrote about this guy. He's gone out of his mind, so you better beware. All because he lost nine inches of hair. A few minutes later, he jumped out of that chair and screamed, Hey, you moron! Look at what you did to my hair! The J.C. Penney company had no comment on the pending lawsuit. As he charges in a suit that not only did he suffer the loss of the enjoyment of life, but psychological damages too. 
He says he needs a shrink to deal with his hair. He's telling his story to a current affair.
of radio. It's the, the happy clown of death. There we go. The death pumpkin. We're up in the we're up here in the cherry picker. We're way up here. This crane has got us hoisted about a hundred feet above the ground. We're at Oshman's uh, Sporting Goods parking lot, and we now have our very first pumpkin of the morning that we're going to drop. And uh, this is uh, well, it's a paint. It's a clown pumpkin. Oh boy, this is good. This is going to be good. Uh, are we on? Can you hear us in your headphones? Okay, it's kind of hard to tell from this altitude. We're both we're both kind of dizzy and woozy. Whoa. Uh, all right, uh, this is the the clown, the happy clown pumpkin that won the uh, Halloween contest. With this, this lady's uh, daughter, so it's going to be the first one to go. We've got uh, Hussein targets taped to our tarp down there. I don't know, how high are we? About 100 feet. About 100 feet? All right, we're going to see if we can smash Hussein, uh, and we've got the area mic'd, by the way, and I hope we're ready to, to hear the sound. All right, we're going to see if we can hit Hussein. Are you guys ready down there? Yeah! <laughs> are we ready? Here goes. All right. Kiss this, Hussein. This one is uh, hollow, so we're going to see if there's any difference in the splatter. Uh, this is the other. Here it goes! Yeah! Oh, that sounded great! Baxter and Mark in the morning. Half hours of non-stop rock and roll all day. Florida's best rock. 100 WDIC. We're talking about Saddam Hussein. We've got a big crowd.